In this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, house robber. And in order to understand this question, sometimes it's best to tell a story. And the story goes something like this. Me and you are both drug addicts. I am addicted to fentanyl. You are addicted to methamphetamine. And currently, we are withdrawing badly on drugs. I'm talking, we haven't smoked up or done any drugs in six hours. We are sweating. We are in a bad mood. And we need drugs now. And we need money, more importantly. And what do drug addicts do when they withdraw? They steal. They rob houses. And that's exactly what we are going to do. And fortunately for us, LeetCode has provided us with a nice little array that represents all of the money in a series of houses. And we've decided we're going to rob these houses. But there is one very important caveat. If we rob one house, the next door neighbor will hear us, an alarm will go off, and he's going to come outside with a gun. So we have to rob every other house. So if I rob this one... I can't rob the one next to it. And the same thing goes for this house. We have to rob every other house. And we need to find a way to calculate the best way to get the most amount of money possible. How are we going to do this? Now, obviously, we're going to solve this with an algorithm. But how do we even begin to solve this? And what type of characteristic does this problem have that makes it suitable for any algorithm? Well, if you haven't noticed already, this problem is based on combinations. Combinations are a very, very common pattern, but not just any combination. This problem has the holy grail. It has sub problems. But what exactly are sub problems? In our example before, we're only robbing just a couple houses. We're robbing maybe two or three houses on the street, and we have to skip a bunch of them. But what if we had to rob 10,000 houses? Well, if we had 10,000 houses to rob, our problem literally would not change. We would use the same calculations to calculate 10,000 houses as we would two or three houses. It doesn't matter where we are in this actual algorithm. We are still going to use the same calculations whether we have 10,000 houses or whether we have five houses. And that is the whole entire idea behind subproblems. You have problems within problems and they are all solved very similarly. And this can be handled with dynamic programming. And if you're not familiar with dynamic programming, it's pretty much recursion. So before we jump into dynamic programming, let's just study the simple, plain Jane, but slow recursive version of the robber problem. And if you don't know a single thing about this problem, you could probably take a look at this line right here and just think to yourself, gee, something important is going on right here in this line of the function. And you would be right. This is the brain. This is where all of the heavy lifting and this is where pretty much all of the calculations are being done. And this is called the recurrence relation. This is a calculation. But what exactly does this even mean? Well, what these two functions mean is two things. This is the function for the money that you would get if you skip the house. And this calculation is the money that you would get if you rob the current house. And when you run this recursive function, you're going to get a very, very, very slow algorithm. An algorithm so slow, it's laughably bad, even worse than quadratic time complexity. And this is where dynamic programming comes in. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the recursion and we're going to put all of these combinations in an array. And let's just step through this step by step. So as I mentioned before, instead of having this huge, nasty recursion tree, we can put everything in an array. And instead of having to recurse through this huge, nasty recursive tree, we can just put everything in a for loop. And here's the best part of all. 
instead of having to create our own calculation for a specific dynamic programming problem, we can just steal the recurrence relation out of the recursion problem that we saw before. And this is our recurrence relation. But here, how is this going to actually work? Well, we're just going to go through and we're going to calculate the maximum value for every single number of houses. So the maximum value for stealing from one house, the maximum value for stealing from two houses. And we're just going to do this for each and every possible combination. So if we can steal from one house, what's the maximum amount? Well, obviously it's going to be one. Let's go to number two. What's the maximum amount that we could steal if we had two houses to steal from? Well, we can only steal from one house at a time if we have two houses to steal from. So it's going to be two. But here's where things get a little bit more complex. And here's where the recurrence relation starts kicking in. So in this math.max recurrence relation problem, what this I minus one basically means is one element to the left. So we're going to calculate the two and what's the maximum value of the nums I DPI minus two. DPI minus two is pretty much two down. So it's going to be four. Now we can calculate now we can do the calculation for the final amount, which is going to be four houses. And we're just going to run it through this recurrence calculation one more time. So DPI minus one is going to be four, nums I plus DPI minus two. So it's going to be two over, it's going to be three. The maximum value is going to be four. And that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's finally code this problem up. So we are inside of IntelliJ, and the first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class. I'm going to call this solution. Within the solution, we are going to create a method. It's going to return an int. We're going to call it Rob, and it's going to take in an integer array of nums. We then need to calculate three possible lengths of the nums that we just passed in. So if the nums.length is equal to zero, we're going to return zero because there's nothing to compute. The next is if the nums.length is equal to one. If we only have one house, the maximum that we could calculate is the one house. So that's the one that we're going to return. And then the next is if we have nums.length.2. And this means we have two houses. So if we only have two houses, we can only rob one. So we're going to take the math.max of the houses. After this, because this is a dynamic programming problem and we don't want to use recursion, we're going to use an array. And this array is usually named DP. And this is done by convention. You could give it a different name, but this is usually what everybody calls it. So the whole entire point of dynamic programming is to turn our recursive tree into an array so that we don't have to have all of those different combinations. But the thing is, is that we still need all of those combinations in the array to calculate future values. And dynamic programming is all about speed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to populate the two first values in our array with the possible values for the one or two houses. And our first element, the array, is going to obviously be the first element within our nums because if we can only rob one house, we're just going to have the first value. And then the second value, just like we had before, is going to be the math.max because if we have two houses, we can only rob one of them. So now that we have the two first values figured out, we can make a for loop that's going to start at the third value. And the reason we're going to start at the third value is because as you notice, this I minus two and this I minus one require previous values to calculate. And that is the whole entire point of dynamic programming and sub problems in general is that in order to obtain the future values, we also have to know the past values. And this array is going to allow us to do this. And if you notice something, all of this calculation right here is just the recurrence relation. So we're, we're running this recurrence relation through a for loop instead of having to do all of the recursion. And that's pretty much it. The only thing that we have left to do now is return the final element within the array. And that is going to give us the maximum amount that we can rob. So let's go ahead and toss this in lead code. I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. I'm going to get out of full screen. Let's go get leak code real quick. 
and I'm going to take this, paste that in there, go ahead, bring this one back. Let's run our test, see what we get. Our test cases are accepted. Let's go ahead, hit submit, make sure our time complexity is good. Yes, time complexity is linear and our memory is linear as well. Congratulations, you have passed the code interview. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.